Thank you for joining us at Servant Crafts. Today we're going to begin a new Bucilla Felt Stocking Kit project. This one is called In the Workshop, and here it is. This is Santa, and he's making so many little toys. Um, I love making these stockings, and I'm so thankful for Servant Crafts and for all those who've supported it. My stockings have been very successful, and I'm so happy to have an opportunity to continue to make them, since I probably wouldn't be making them for my family because they're all made. <laughs> so let's get started with Santa in the workshop, and let's pray for the peace of Christ to be with us this Christmas Eve. Okay, so it looks like this stocking <clears throat> has 160 pieces in it. So this is gonna be a big one. This could take a bit, um, but I'd like to take you along with me. Uh, we have an opportunity and invite you to check out how to get started with Bucilla Felt Kits. Um, I have a video on that, and that helps you to kind of see how I organize myself. And I've done these for many years now, uh, probably close to 40 years. Um, and you can take advantage of some of the things that I've learned to stay organized and how to set yourself up for success. Um, sometimes with so many little pieces and things it can become tedious so it is really helpful to have a plan have a game plan to have things easy um, to set up and to grab and to work on for a bit and then to put it away that's how i find my work is most successful so i'd invite you to um, check out that video and the other videos of the bucilla felt kits that i have made um, each one has a I try to add another idea or um, something that you can learn from each other. All the pieces are going to be layered on top of this base. The top of the stocking has some and the top, I think there'll be some kind of design or decoration here. Then a few sequins in the background <clears throat> that are just on this one main piece. Here's what's done so far on this on the foundation of the stocking. Pretty much it's just the window, but that window includes pieces two through nine. And um, so there's embroidery. These white snow pieces are added with the sequins. And then this is a cording step which I'll uh, bring in a little closer. So you actually make cording with floss and um, that gets, gets um, applied. Now I found that my floss, my cording um, raised up a bit uh, because it, it didn't stay truly flat. So I took one strand of floss and did one stitch uh, in either direction on the corners there and that held it down nice and tight. I also found that if I took, the, I didn't try to take the cording down in, uh, it came up over here on these edges, but I didn't try to take it down on the very edge. I brought it to the back side and then knotted it and stitched it down and I think that will um, makes the edge a little bit more coherent. I also was very careful when I applied these pieces of snow to the corner not to go all the way to the line where the cording was or else the cording would sit on top of the snow and not kind of against it or in between. So those are just two little tips on <clears throat> this window so far that uh, would be good to know. And uh, you might want to so use 44 out of 160. You can see here from the uh, picture that there, what's been done and what is left to be done. So uh, let me bring you in a little closer here. I think we looked and focused on the window last time. This time let's focus on Santa and his face. Um, Lots and lots of details again here. Beautiful um, layers. Santa's hat 
actually has two pieces so this back piece and then this top piece as well as the pom-pom and also the uh, trim on his hat and the beautiful leaves and holly berries but his face he has got um, eyebrows and a tuft of hair he's got back under here his face which has um, embroidery uh, black for his um, pupil <clears throat> a little shine of white uh, French knots for the glisten in his eye and then we've gone around the eye with brown and highlighted a couple of little eyelashes makes you feel like his eyes are brown um, he has a nice little nose that's been embroidered on there with felt um, it's not a satin stitch but it is felt and it's uh, got a little bit of stuffing in it to make it kind of pop out a bit and then he's got this mustache which is not fully attached so that you get the feeling that it's uh, a little bit more 3d and then his mouth here you can see um, is a piece of red felt but it's got black embroidery on it to give you give you the impression of his mouth now I'm about to apply his uh, rosy cheeks which come just above his um, his uh, mustache there. I use this um, washout cloth marker. It's actually just a chalk kind of a marker and uh, I use the one with red. And you can see that that will give me just a little blush onto his cheek. pretty good and we'll do it again right here because Santa is always jolly and that gives him his little rosy cheeks there I can uh, put a link it's called Easy Washout Marker Red. I can put a link. I bought these um, in a package that actually came with uh, black, blue, red, and white. So I'll see if I can find a package that just has the red. You also have to have a special manual sharpener um, to keep the end of this uh, pretty well sharpened so that you can get in there. You don't want it too sharp because it will go right through the felt, um, but the end does have to be sharpened a bit um, in order to be able to do that. So I'll try to get you a link for that. So that's pretty much where we've gone. We've got his arm here with his hand. That hand will get the choo-choo train uh, in it. And we have next, uh, let's see, I'm on 44. So what's brighter sequin front sleeve? So we're, we are gonna be working on this sleeve here. Here's how far we got uh, from yesterday. Santa has, has this arm finished here. And it's double sided. So it's uh, stitched and stuffed. And then there is the drum right here. There's quite a few pieces in the drum. The back, the head of the drum, the main piece of the drum with its embroidery and the trim, two trim pieces. So quite a bit there. Uh, right now I'm working on this table leg and the tabletop. Okay, I'm just about to this other edge here. Oops, need to make a few more stitches to get there.
I probably can only do one more stitch here. So at this point I'm on top, but I'm going to go down from underneath right where I would finish this stitch and make sure that it follows make sure that it follows the line that I want it to. Floss is tangling quite a bit because this is a three strand floss that we needed for this particular piece. Okay, now I need to make sure that it comes up here, right where the line needs to be. All three strands, I've got one shorter strand. Okay. Well, that as tight as you can, but it won't get real tight or else it'll curl your piece. And then to finish, I go down right next to it. And that, especially since this is kind of on an edge, should hold that floss right there on that edge. And allow me to come back on this side and tie it, make my knot and tie it off without, I'm going to go a little farther right there, without um, pulling on the stitching there that we've done. Again, I always do two knots, that's just me. Probably not necessary, but little insurance. So that takes your outline stitch from one edge without fraying the fabric all the way to the other edge and allows you to tie off and to not um, not have any issues with the felt fabric on the edges. I hope that's easy for you to see. Now I just need to finish this line and I can put the top of the table on. see made quite a bit of progress on this stocking recently. It's actually almost finished. I'm just working on the toys that get strung on the, the line to dry there and then um, the name. Of course it does need the back put on. As you can see the back here, got quite a bit going on on the back but nothing that's going to catch or interfere with using the stocking. All these bits of cording uh, do end up being a little bit more on the back than I like, but still very usable. So Santa has his arm, he has his paintbrush, the paint cans with their little, um, coming closer here. The paint cans each have a little rope. It's like a handle, and that's 3D there. Santa's the train. He's got both a front and back. Uh, so that was quite a few pieces. I didn't count how many that was. <clears throat> and then all the toys here at the bottom. The teddy bear, a drum, a little rocking horse, and a cute little ball. Uh, with sequins and everything on it. So this particular stocking is almost finished. Um, it has lots of cording on this stocking, I would say, more than I've come across on other stockings. It has cording here in the windows, it has the cording for the pail, and it does have cording here for, um, you can see that, for the horse um, and kind of his little reins and stuff um, there. So quite a bit of cording. So make sure if you're going to do this stocking that you've got a pen because it does use a pen and the pen has to have this little clip on it, the little shirt clip. 
or pocket clip because um, I hang it, it recommends that you hang that on the floss after you've twisted it and then that allows the floss to twist on itself because it has a weight um, so that's I always have that <clears throat> in my box where I'm working all right let's um, go through a demonstration quickly of how to make cording since there is so much cording on this pattern for this kit um, the really first and most crucial thing to do is to read the directions carefully now I'm going to read the directions for the name tag and it's the cording to hang the name tag and it says using six strands of dark green floss right here six strands of dark green floss make six inches of cording that means that when you are finished with it you should have six inches of cording now the cording doubles up on itself so you have to cut double of what you want to end up with because that's what's going to be used plus so they want six inches double is going to be 12 inches now you can see my little ruler here um, I'm going to cut about a half an inch extra on each end and I'm not pulling the floss at all okay tight so this will give me a little bit of extra room for tying the knot that it's asking to be tied so for a six inch piece of cording I am cutting 12 inches plus a half inch or, or more I figure always err on the side of longer because you can always cut some off as opposed to if you go too short now you are in a situation where you got to start all over again so after I've cut my length I'm gonna get a piece of tape and I'm gonna tape it down to the table about a half an inch of it so I get it you got to get it stuck on there pretty good so that it doesn't come off I have my pen with my uh, pocket clip available and ready to go because now I'm going to take this and I'm going to twist it twist it really tight and you'll be able to see when you've really gotten as much twist in there as you can <clears throat> and I just keep spinning it in my fingers and it looks like it's pretty well twisted and tight okay you really can't take much more Now, once I get to that point, I'm going to guesstimate about the middle of the floss and clip that on my pen hook or my pen, my cap, and bring the end to to the other end and allow it to just twist on itself. And the weight of the pen and the clip is what helps that happen. Now you can see you've really got something that looks like a cord or a rope now. And I need to unfasten the tape and take out the pen. And see, I've got a nice piece of cording there. Now, based on what it says to do, I usually take these ends and get a knot into them right away so that I don't lose my twist. Now, based on what it says to do, usually you need to thread it into the 
into a large eye needle. And this is what I have here. You can see the eye is huge. It's really made for yarn, but the end does have a point, enough of a point to be able to get through the felt. So I'm gonna thread in the end that has got the loop on it. And you don't wanna to put too much through because honestly, the size of this eye, in addition to the cording, sometimes you have to really work it to uh, get it through all the felt and to pull it through. And then for this particular one, we're gonna be knotting the two ends together once we get it um, through the, yard, the, the stocking where we want it. And then you can knot the two ends together by simply trimming this end off, this knot off, or by just tying a knot of some kind, any kind you like. But there's the cording. It's pretty simple. Uh, they don't give you a whole lot of directions on the pattern. What I would caution you most on is reading the directions. Are they telling you they want six inches of cording finished? Or are they telling you to cut six inches of floss to make a three inch piece of cording? So that's a real important detail that you need to read. Are they giving you the length of the finished cording? Or are they giving you the length of the piece of floss they want you to cut? And let me show you here that with the 12 inches of floss that I cut, plus or minus, I ended up with, by the time I tied my knot, only five and a half inches of actual cording. So um, my plan of going an inch more uh, could even have gone farther than that because of the knot that I that I made there. So I could have gone even farther with about 13 or 14 inches. So double plus an inch at least, or um, maybe a little more, maybe two. So I can let you see, I do have, let's see, I have the dolly. She's almost finished. Well, not really, I guess she doesn't have any arms or legs, so she's not quite finished. Um, I do have the house. It's a little doll house, I think. That's finished. And that's ready to be hung on the uh, drying line that Santa has set up there for his toys. So I need to make that cording. And then I have the house. I have the doll. <clears throat> of course, she needs two arms and two legs. And then she'll be finished. And then there's a little car. It's kind of like a Volkswagen bug car. That needs to be made. And two candy canes. And then we are on to applying the back and getting the personalization done and it'll be ready to go up for sale.
here is the finished stocking, Bucilla in the workshop stocking with Santa in the workshop here. I think you can see the whole thing there is. The name on this one is going to be personalized on this tag here. But let me give you some nice close-ups of what we've got going on here. Here's the top of the stocking. Got lots of detail in all of these toys that are here. down to Santa. He's got great detail in his face, the Santa does. He's working on a cute train. You've got all the snow and in the background in the window in his house. And he is detailing the train with a paintbrush his paint cans sitting on his table with all the wood grain on the table. He's got an apron on. It's tied in the back there. And a little detail as well as a stool he's sitting on and his boots. And then over here are the toys that he has finished so far. So you've got a teddy bear, a ball, and if I move Teddy's head a little bit, you can see a rocking horse. And he's got his reins and his tail, his little ears. And then there's a drum. Like I said, this stocking will be personalized on this tag up top. And so there's the finished in the workshop stocking.